All right. Well, I, I'll tell you what. Let me let's go ahead and get started by letting giving you an opportunity to kind of tell folks who you are and why we should give a shit what you have to say. <laughs> All right. So I'm Tim Ward. I'm a communications expert living in the Washington D.C. area, the belly of the beast. All right. And I'm the co-author of a, of a book you see right here behind me called Pro Truth: A Practical Plan for Putting Truth Back into Politics. My co-author is the founder of the Pro Truth pledge and he and i together wrote this book because we believe now's the time to have citizens fight to get truth back into politics and really make a case that truth matters this has begun during the 2016 election and i say my co-author and i we've been dismayed by four years of a president who lies repeatedly to the american public now the book of the project it's nonpartisan. But we believe truth is cor uh, that falsehood, falsehood, that post-truth politics is corrosive to democracy. And so we created this um, book and the Pro-Truth Pledge was designed to give citizens a way to push back and say to politicians, you have got to tell us the truth because you're working for us. And if you don't tell us the truth, you'd be fired. Think about it. Who would have an employee on staff who they knew chronically lied to you? No, you wouldn't put up with it. What would you say? You're fired. Get out of here. Now, at last, it looks like America is on the cusp of doing that to the man who's told the country over 25,000 lies in the last four years. So there's a couple things in that. Um, first thing first thing was um, you, you mentioned putting truth back into politics, which kind of carries with it this implicit idea that truth was ever – important in politics or whether it was ever a part of politics in so far as you know it's it's a common trope we've known this for decades probably for centuries the politicians lie it's just kind of comes with the territory it's it's a it's common knowledge you just know you almost know whatever a politician is talking to you <laughs> you might as well just take whatever he says and just go with the opposite you know, let me let me put a, a bit of nuance on, on top of that, Daniel. I would say politicians are all tempted to lie. Mm -hmm. The difference is often whether or not they think they can get away with it and whether citizens are ready to hold them to account or not makes a big difference. So look at Nixon. He lied over the, water, over the Watergate cover-up. But when this was exposed, he chose to resign rather than be impeached because he knew the truth was out there. Clinton, he, you know, lied under oath, right? The, depending on the meaning of what is, is. And although he did not get impeached, Gore suffered for it, lost the 2020 election. So it's quite clear that Americans in the past have held their politicians to account if they've lied in serious ways. Right. And what we saw is that this seemed to have really been seriously eroded in 2016. And that's why we really want to put truth back on the map. And really, if you think about it, let's take a look at the greatest presidents. You know, greatest presidents, you know, they're, they're on Mount Rushmore. Who are the ones that are immediately come to mind? George Washington, the cherry tree, and Abe, honest Abe, Lincoln. So honesty in our presidents is actually something Americans have traditionally really valued. And we think that letting go of that value has been a big mistake. No, we absolutely do value honesty that's that's 100 yeah. percent. i would agree with that and i think everybody as a whole wants a little honesty in their life and you know but i also would be a little remiss to say that not every single one of us even as americans that if we're going to hold a president or any elected official accountable I, I would almost seem like a hypocrite because i i I've lied about things. You've lied about things, and I'm sure you have as well. So it, it's to me, it's so my, I guess my question to you is, was when you decided to do this book, was this based off of Trump as the person president or was this something that you kind of wanted to to dig into because of past presidents and and what elect officials have done over the years? Well, uh, this is a super important question. Right. And indeed, the pro-truth pledge in the book itself is not about always being 100% honest with everything you say. Right. You know, people tell white lies, people tell convenient lies. But if you are a political leader, or if you're dealing in the realm of politics, passing off deliberate falsehoods as truth is corrosive to democracy, right? right? If you tell people 
that the pandemic is going away when the numbers are rising, you're telling people a falsehood which will affect how they act and behave in ways that could cost them their lives and cost the lives of the people in their families and in their communities. So truth has a cost. Lies have a cost. So this is strictly about political speech. And it's about political speech because political speech is public. A democracy depends on being able to establish certain facts. And then people with different value systems, Republicans, Democrats, Christians, Muslims, atheists, can argue about how their values can be represented. But you need a set of facts to argue about. If you don't have common facts, if you just have one tribal leader saying this is the truth and another tribal leader saying this is the truth, then all you've got is warring tribes, anarchy, and literally the breakdown of democracy. Well, I'll give you warring tribes, but I won't give you anarchy. I'm actually an anarchist, and that's not what anarchy is at all. That is a serious misrepresentation.